everybody. So podcasting, get your brand talking. I'm Claire Wass, I'm the marketing manager for Downside Abbey, which is a Benedictine monastery in Somerset, and also for Downside School, which is an 11 to 18 Catholic boarding school on the same site. Like all of you here today, I'm constantly managing lots of different projects and trying to weigh up which activities are going to deliver a return um, and, and which won't, and, and those that are ultimately going to drive conversions on our website. At Downside, we discovered something quite interesting when we started using audio about 18 months ago. And I'm really here today just to share a few tips on things that we did well and things that we didn't do so well um, to hopefully inspire you on the same path and hopefully not put you off. Um, <clears throat> here are a few of my monks at Downside Abbey. <laughs> Their average age is probably about 70, so if they can get into podcasting, you definitely can. It's fun, it's cheap, it's addictive, and everybody can do it, um, do it really well. So today we're going to go on a whistle-stop um, tour of about sort of 20 minutes. First, we're going to look at what is podcasting, and then we're going to explore a few of the techniques, so recording, editing, and broadcasting. So, <clears throat> what is a podcast? People throw the term around, and it's not especially descriptive. It was first used around 2004, the love child of iPod and broadcast. And from the outset, it's always been a fairly solitary activity, something you listen to through little tiny white headphones. Generally speaking, it's a piece of digital audio, so not on a CD. And it can be downloaded or streamed on a PC or device. Many of the popular ones that we think of as podcasts are a series. So we might think of the Ricky Gervais podcast, we might think of Desert Island Discs, the Radio 4 podcast, and we might think of something like Mark Kermode's Five Live film programme. They're in the same format each time. They're available at regular intervals, so they might be daily, they might be weekly, and they're usually around the same sort of length. Your organisation will definitely be able to offer something at regular intervals in the same format. We've tended to do both at Downside. We have a regular series, and then we also stream ad hoc audio that we use to colour web stories. I love to use audio to colour a story, a boring old web article, pupil success story. It's so much more interesting if you can capture the intonation in their voice, you know, the speed at which they're telling you the story. And this is also really great for families for whom written English might not be their first language. So, I've got a little example for you. Um, this is an alumni story. We had the Royal Welsh Guards visit Downside uh, a little while ago, and um, <clears throat> they wanted help with something in exchange for some CCF training. I'm just going to play this example to you and just have a little listen and think, would this have worked in the same way without audio? And hopefully this is going to work. Hello, my name's Captain Felix Wright from the Welsh Guards. So the choir from the Welsh Guards uh, has just started in earnest this time. There's been a company that's been singing for the last couple of years and they sang in Afghanistan actually two years ago. So the reason we've come to Downside today is because I'm an OG from the school and I used to be in the choir with Chris Tambling, who's kindly helped us today. I thought that there could be a joint venture where we could be helped with our singing and in return we could offer some military skills. I think the soldiers that we've brought down today, I think that they can take away that they've, they've really brought on their singing skills and singing as a group together. hope that when we move forward looking into our centenary year next year that we'll be able to sing on St David's Day. So that was just a really quick um, interview that took about you know two minutes to record and sort of 15 minutes to, to put together and, stand, and send out on, um, on a lunch break. Um, the second example I'm going to play, which kind of applies to those who are working with, with younger children, perhaps. Um, does anybody know the Michael Faraday School in Camberwell? No? 
Um, they're doing amazing things with audio, so just have a look um, at what they're doing online. There's an example here of something they did in the classroom, which I quite like. We've come into year two here at Michael Faraday School to share and learn, hopefully, a little more about our recent history work. So we've got a couple of characters, some very famous characters to try and explore. And to help us with this, we've got a couple of other characters who are not quite as famous yet, but who knows one day. So let's find out first of all our names, please. Chris. And Madam. Esther. We've got Chris and Esther, both from year two. Now I mentioned Chris, we've been researching about some very famous historical characters. Who, um, who are these, please? Florence Nightingale and Mary Seacole. So Florence Nightingale and Mary Seacole. And they go on to explore, um, you know, what the children have learnt about those historical characters. So, um, if those examples haven't inspired you, how about this one? One thing to keep in mind when using audio is that your customers are already one step ahead of you. They're making time for podcasts and they're in the habit of consuming them. Oh, uh, I just need to go on to the next slide. Thank you. <laughs> 2016, amongst you know, lots of other things, is the year of the podcast. 3.8 million people in the UK alone are listening to them, and this figure is one that just keeps going up. To put this into context, when I used to work at BBC Radio 3, we had about 2 million listeners, so twice as many as a BBC National Station are listening to podcasts. Like everything, the success of the podcast is generally related to the success of the smartphone and also streaming platforms. We've got these new fantastic streaming platforms and it's now easier than ever to listen and, and make podcasts. In fact, as a share of the listening ear, podcasts account for 2%. That figure might sound quite small, but if I tell you that CDs count for 5%, you can see how fast things are changing. Of the 3.8 million people listening, 53% are listening on smartphones, they're driving, they're running, and 22% of them are studying, which might be interesting if, if you're a university trying to ap apply to, um, to sick formers, perhaps. 66% of them are male, and most are listening between 6 and 6.15pm, so perhaps on their way home. So whichever way you look at it, this is now a thing. So, anyway, unintentionally, we tried it out. We weren't looking to create a podcast, it just sort of happened. We were already recording talks and lectures that were happening on site. They're long, they're really easy to edit, and you just throw them out there. Before SoundCloud cropped up, we were just recording them and putting them on YouTube with you know, a few stills over the top. And actually, it's much too much work, because you edit the audio, then you have to edit it you know, as a sort of film, and then you know, ultimately, it just looks like a poor man's video. Eventually, these went on to SoundCloud, we uploaded the school song, and the alumni w loved it. They went wild, and something of two minutes, we suddenly discovered, was much more powerful than something of an hour. We had over a 1,000 listens within a day, and for quite a small school, we, we were pleased with that. We then started to use Vox Pops, which is a simple technique where you basically ask one question and then montage all the responses together. The more people, of course, you ask, the more people are going to listen because they want to hear themselves and share it. Um, I've got another example here of one that some pupils at Downside did last month as part of our month of service. Here we go. Oops. So we are approaching the month of service. Uh, what have you done today to help other people? I carried Tilly's books to her lesson because her arm was hurting. Um, I didn't even ask her, she just offered when I said that my arm hurt. She just, she just straight away said, oh, I'll take your books. And she took them in her arms and carried them to my lesson. I helped the younger students of the day challenging prep. Um, this morning, uh, me and my group emptied the bins in the whole house. Well, I've been tr trying to help others by keeping things tidy in the sacristy, putting some vestments away, putting my own vestments away, putting others out as well, to make sure and putting things away in the cupboards. So that hope that helps the general well being of the Abbey Church. I washed the plates the other day in my house. A visitor arrived at the school today and was lost, therefore I showed them the way to reception. I cleaned the kitchen. I made a cup of tea for a very tired friend. When everyone comes to the house, I always welcome them really nicely. It's like, hello everyone, with a big smile on my face. I think it's quite helpful to start the day like that. So, that was so we are approaching Oops. the month of September. 
that was something that the pupils created completely on their own and I wasn't involved at all and just, you know, authentic, you know, sense of personalities and behind the scenes kind of content. So the thing that really started to build a small following and develop our real series, a true podcast, was an idea that came from a parishioner in the Abbey Church. Let's record the homily, she said. The homily is a sort of 10, 15 minute musing in the middle of a mass service. Um, and each Sunday we have a monk who reads from the Holy Gospel and then another one who, who does the homily. And it's kind of, uh, you know, in summary of what's happened that week as well. So and in my mind, I thought, well, this is podcast gold. It's topical. It's regular. It's the monks. Everyone loves the monks. And it's the right length. It's kind of 10 to 20 minutes, which is perfect for a podcast. It worked. We had alumni listening in Mexico and LA. We had parents in Germany keeping in touch with what their kids were hearing at school. We had grandparents keeping in touch and we had parishioners who were too poorly to get to the church. So that was all great. But the best bit, the bit that makes me smile is that the monks soon up to their game. They're competing for listeners. <laughs> They're improving their performance for the benefit of the recording. Um, couldn't make it up really. Anyway, Briefly, techniques, recording, editing, broadcasting. You'll do it in that order, but you need to think about it backwards first. Who is it for? This is what we've all been saying all day. Who is it for? Where is it going? And what do you want to hear? What is your message ultimately? Recording. Get the gear. It's really cheap, um, but it does depend on what you want to do. If you just want to do short, sharp interviews, like the ones that you heard the kids doing just now, just use an iPhone. You know, they're, they're great. If you want to do something slightly more in, involved, um, you know, lectures, talks, um, longer interviews, get a handheld audio recorder like one of these. Um, the Tascam and Zoom brands, uh, like the ones above, are really good on a budget. Um, and if you want to do something more involved, like perhaps music ensembles or something, you can just go for a higher spec one of these, or the Rode Procaster is pretty good as well. Um, my weapon of choice is this one. It's the Tascam DR05, and there's the, the 07 as well. I can create 24-bit high-res audio and export it as a WAV or an MP3 file, which is more than ample for a speech podcast. It features omnidirectional mics, which is really great to get atmospheric sound, and you can also plug in an external microphone, like, like one of these things, a lapel mic, if you want to get close-up sound for an interview. My Amazon wish list currently has the Zoom H5 and the Rode Procaster. Um, however, the Tascam doesn't seem to want to break, so <laughs> that's where I am at the moment. Um, my kit that I carry around is the Tascam, a tripod, some headphones for monitoring output, um, lapel mics, loads of spare batteries, and pen and paper. And I've done a handout so we can circulate that as well with a few tips on kits and comparisons of all these things. So... Um, a few practical tips for good recording technique. Ask open questions. Don't allow a yes or no response. So things like, you know, tell me about, describe, those kind of questions. Get lower than your interviewee to give them a bit of confidence. If you've got them sitting on a chair, kneel down on the floor and, and go up like that. That will help the response you're going to get. When you're asking questions in the middle of an interview, do not respond. I've done this so many, many times, and it's the most annoying thing when you're in the edit to hear yourself just saying, uh-huh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> always, always, always carry spare batteries. There's nothing worse um, than if you run out of battery. Do your homework. Know your interviewee in case the, res the responses aren't forthcoming and you have to change direction midway through. Plan ahead with your sound effects as well. It's good if you can get these whilst you're on location. You know, if you're doing a piece about Brighton and you want the sound of a, a seagull or the sound of the waves, get that whilst you're there as well. So think ahead. Editing. Again, no need to break the bank. You know, podcasting is so cheap. Um, download a piece of software called Audacity. A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. It's free. I've been using it for over a decade, and it's really all you need for podcasting. I've used more advanced pieces of software like Sadie and all that kind of thing, and you really don't need anything like that. You don't spend any money on editing software. You can download it for Mac or PC and export WAVs. It's absolutely perfect. So learn the basics. A few things that you do need to master if you're going to edit audio. You need to learn how to amplify, because after all, people are going to be listening in little tiny headphones. And usually, whatever you're recording on, it will come in too quiet. So you need to amplify. You need to learn how to cut, um, so get rid of the bits you don't want. 
You also need to learn how to fade in and fade out to sharpen those ends and make it sound nice and professional. And you need to learn how to export as a WAV or an MP3, because that's, that's the sort of file that you need to use um, on something like SoundCloud. It's also quite good practice to learn how to record and use an intro as well. Perhaps get somebody who sort of personifies your brand. We've got, um, our intro has Father, Father Leo, who's everyone's favourite monk at Downside, just sort of saying, you know, thank you for downloading this audio. You know, for more, you can find us at, and then create your website. There's a temptation to record on an iPhone and use one of those in-app editors instead of Audacity. You can, of course, upload straight from there to SoundCloud or Audioboom, and that's really great. But just keep in mind that you're really limited to some very basic edits on those sort of things. Um, it's great if you're in a serious hurry, but it's not the kind of practice that I try to use um, at our end. It's also quite nice to have it saved on your computer if you need it again. <coughs> Broadcasting, like everything, just try and get this automated to make it really easy. Ultimately, you upload to a hosting platform. We use SoundCloud, but Audio Boom does look amazing. Um, and then get it automated so it's throwing it out to social media, Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and things. And um, you can untick these, obviously, for specific tracks. And then also set it up automatically with an RSS feed going to your podcaster, where, where people can find it. So I use um, iTunes for those using Apple and also Stitcher for Android users. Um, have a look at the different platforms, because like I say, you know, perhaps in hindsight I might have used Audioboom, but I think SoundCloud you know, is really good. We use an unlimited account, which costs about 60, 70 pounds a year, and it means I don't have to worry about the length of any of the tracks or how many tracks I'm using. Um, but again, all of this is on a handout that, that I can circulate, so you can sort of you know, use it as a starting point to con compare. Um, think about how you're going to brand your channel homepage. You know, get it to fit with your brand. I've got one account that hosts playlists for Downside Abbey, Downside School, and then the library, you know, I'm not sure if that's the best way of doing it. We've all got different structures and different departments, but uh, it means I can share a playlist as a single URL for each of those slightly specific audiences. So have a think about that as you're going to build content into that page. You know, how, how do you want to manage it and organise it? So my monks again, <laughs> just to kind of conclude. What have you got that you can use? How can audio enhance your message? You know, perhaps you've got lectures and talks, perhaps you've got interviews of success stories, perhaps you've got anniversary specials, archive material that can be recorded. Um, you know, this is a good example for us of how other people picking up on content. We recorded um, some bits from our monastery library, you know, um, diary extracts from the Somme, and then it got picked up by BBC Somerset and they did a you know, much more um, creative version of it, it was, and then that went further. So you know, it can really help. Perhaps you've got special visits and guests that you can record interviews with. And audiobooks as well. We had a project in our library with um, all the pupils recording Treasure Island. You know, they each took an extract and that was made available. Obviously, check copyright if you're going to get involved in things like that. So, a reminder, don't break the bank. Have a go with your smartphone. You know, have a go with Audacity, which is free. Use the free version of SoundCloud and just see what happens. Just experiment. Get yourself trained, get your pupils trained and get reporting. Enhance your message and get people talking. Get the kids to pr produce some content. They'll share and endorse it. And ultimately, isn't this what we're all aiming for? At Downside, we love it when the kids create content. Well, I love it because it just makes my life just a simple editing job. Um, <laughs> it's so authentic. They learn something, they're proud, they share it with their parents, and the result, positive word of mouth. And the last thing, <laughs> just listen to lots and lots of radio. And, and that's not really hard, is it? So, get your brand talking, and if you want to talk more to me, those are my details. Thank you and good luck.